The final bosses in every single Mario and Luigi game is very fun. A final boss to me personally has to be very cinematic and has some very good attacks. Well guess what, every single Mario and Luigi final boss hits this criteria. So every single one is good, at least. But obviously some are going to be better than others, so I decided to rank all 7 final bosses from every Mario and Luigi game. And you may be wondering, 7? Well I'm going to be counting Bowser's minions and Bowser Jr's journey for this list. And obviously they do have some pretty interesting final bosses. Doesn't mean good, but interesting for, at the very least. So because of that, there's going to be 7 final bosses, and I hope you guys will enjoy this video. But before we start, I am still trying to hit 1,000 subscribers before summer break hits, so I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed if you haven't. But other than that, let's get into this video. I've been thinking for a while about what I should say in this segment, but Bowser's Minions doesn't even have a final boss, so do I even deserve to talk about it? Does this final boss fight even deserve to be talked about on this list? The only reason I'm talking about it is because Bowser Jr.'s journey has a good final boss. This obviously doesn't. Is this even considered a final boss? For me, it's not. It's just a long boss level. The only thing that separates it from other bosses in this game is the different music theme. That's the only thing, but it's not even original to Bowser's Minions. It's just Kakletta's boss theme in Woohoo University. This boss fight's also so long, it has six waves, which contributes to this boss fight just being boring. Once I get to wave four or wave five, I just don't want to do the fight anymore. I'm just bored out of my mind, which is kind of a factor of this game being on autoplay, but Bowser Jr.'s journey worked. Why didn't this one work? Well, we'll talk about that in the Bowser Jr.'s journey segment, but here, just know that Bowser's Minions does not have a final boss. It really doesn't. It just has a lot of bosses. No final boss. It doesn't even deserve to be called a final boss, because that's an insult to other final bosses in this game. I do not like the final boss from Bowser's Minions at all. Dreamy Bowser is a great final boss. It's really fun. It fits every single criteria I have for a final boss in a Mario and Luigi game. Great immersion, great final boss theme, and great attacks. But this is the only final battle I have a massive problem with. And this top 6 was really hard to make. I mean, there's definitely just minor problems separating each of these. That's it. Only minor problems. And this is why Dreamy Bowser is number 6, because there's actually a massive problem with this fight. And as you see my boss ranking for Dream Team, you know exactly what it is. I think that this boss battle is too easy. I genuinely think it is. I mean, even on hard mode, I think this boss battle is too easy. Now, there's two common rebuttals I heard from people. One, they thought I was overleveled, and I was level 43. That's definitely a bit overleveled, but once you get to rainbow rank, your stat increases from level ups are just pathetic. It's only like one for each stat, and that's barely anything when you get really high. So because of this, I didn't think I was too overleveled. And the other thing is that people thought I was using the farmer boots to get more beans. Well, I did collect every single bean in the overworld, I actually sold the farmer boots. <laughs> Not because of this purpose alone, just because I'm an idiot. So, I wasn't able to have access to them. That means I didn't have extra beans. So, okay, then I'm not overleveled. And I didn't have access to farmer boots, which means that my stats weren't that overleveled. And that kind of shows that Dream Bowser needed to have more buffed stats. Maybe more power? Mainly, though, more HP and defense. That's the main thing that this boss fight needed, and it probably would have been in my top 5. I do genuinely enjoy this attacks though. I mean, his attacks are really fun, especially the minion attack. I don't actually mind him healing, I know a couple of people found that annoying. I personally didn't, and I really like the fire attack, the screen chase segment, because it's genuinely hard to dodge. And again, Dream of Bowser is a great fight, but for me personally, this boss fight needed to be harder. I actually think this is the easiest final boss fight in a Mario and Luigi game, and that's definitely a bit disappointing. So, Cackletta's Soul is a great boss fight in my opinion. It's a really fun boss, but I do not think it's a great final boss. It's a good final boss, don't get me wrong, but if we're using the three main points I laid out for a final boss to be great, well, it doesn't really fill that criteria out that much. I mean, it does have great immersion, and it does have a great theme. It's a good theme, but when we're comparing it to In the Final and Adventure's End, and obviously the other really good themes for these final bosses, 
it's kind of unmemorable, which is a bit disappointing. But obviously, this boss fight has a great setup of attacks. It has a really good set of attacks. I mean, they're pretty difficult to dodge, and they're kind of unique. And I'm glad that they're unique, because difficulty doesn't last that long when you play a boss fight multiple times. And this is why I think Cacleta's soul will get worse along the way. I think that it might get worse than Dreamy Bowser. It won't get as easy as that fight, but since difficulty is all that this boss really has, I think that once it's gone, well, there's nothing going to be really here. There's no point of me really fighting this fight again, because the difficulty's gone. And that's all this boss fight really has. Obviously, it has that unique attacks. The really unique set of attacks. I think that's enjoyable. I like that its weak point isn't always exposed. That's a really good thing, and I really enjoy that part of the fight. But it really needed to have more unique attacks. It needs to have a better theme, and it needs to have better immersion. I was really confused originally why I had this boss ranked so low. Because it's really difficult, and that makes it more fun. But when I realized it didn't really have that good immersion, that's the main thing that just broke it to me. That's when I realized, like, okay, this final boss isn't that great. Obviously, it's a fun fight, but it needs that immersion to make it a great final boss. And for me personally, it doesn't. This is the last boss fight that I think has a massive problem attached to it. I really enjoy Elder Princess Shroob. I think it's the better version of Cacleta's Soul. This boss fight is Cacleta's Soul, but it has that immersion and a great final boss theme. But I mentioned in the Cacleta's Soul segment, if Cacleta's Soul had great immersion and a great boss theme, it'd be really high on the list. While Elder Princess Shroob is only number four. Why is it only number four? Well, this is what happens when I get really good at a final boss. When I replayed this final boss for this list, I was really good at it. And that's not normally a bad thing, but I only got hit two or three times. And this is really sad because Elder Princess Shroob attacks you two or three times a turn. So I basically pulled off a dodgeless run on accident, or I almost pulled it off. So that's really sad. I mean, I played this final boss fight so many times that it's not difficult to me anymore, unlike Cacleta's Soul. I still really enjoy this fight. I really like the atmosphere here. I really like the depressing theme. Again, that stuff sticks with me. I really like the unique attacks, but I am immune to everything in this final boss. So because of that, it has to be number four. This is not even against the Elder Princess Shrew fight. This is all on me. I've played this boss fight way too many times, and that's why it's at number four. The top three now only has minor problems. This is the last boss fight with a massive problem, and this massive problem sadly doesn't make this boss fight that much fun. Again, it's a really fun fight that I do like replaying, but I don't think I'll just go back to Partners in Time just to replay Elder Princess Shroob anymore, which is very disappointing. This boss fight is the most underrated boss fight in the whole Mario and Luigi franchise. It's why I wanted to include both Bowser's Minions and Bowser Jr.'s Journey on this list, because this is such an enjoyable final boss. Let's go through the three criteria I listed for a final boss. Great immersion. This boss fight gets me so immersed. I'm so into this boss fight. First off, the really intense theme, which obviously the theme's great here, extremely underrated, probably in my top three favorite final boss themes. We also have Bowser Jr. and your other side captain giving really inspirational text. It works really well. And the other thing is that the attacks or the captain commands that the final boss actually does is really difficult and is really immersive and intense. And that also leads into the attacks or the captain commands that this final boss does. He removes some of your captain commands. He removes some of your allies on the battlefield. They'll come back eventually, but for a little bit, you can't use them. They also have the final boss taking another melatonin, which makes it very scary because it buffs all of its stats. Also, it's really powerful move it's a huge hyper beam that hits every single enemy, and you can't stop it unless you're using Ludwig in the deny and stop. This does a great service to Bowser Jr.'s journey, and it kind of redeems Bowser's minions. It shows that this type of game can have great bosses, and I really enjoy this final boss. 
It's really immersive and I find it really fun. I also love the theme and this experience, my first experience with this final boss was amazing. I really did not expect them to fuse. I really did not expect this amazing final boss theme. I thought this would just be a good final boss, just average. No, it blew me away. And this is not even from nostalgia. This is just from me being genuinely impressed with this final boss. This is the first final boss that we've talked about that I genuinely love. But obviously it's not the last. Shiny Robo Bowser, I did not expect this boss fight at all to get ranked this high. Well, first off, I think that in general, most people forget about this boss fight, which is understandable. Paper Jam is a pretty forgettable game, but oh my god, the bosses in Paper Jam in general are pretty good, but Shiny Robo Bowser impressed me like crazy when I first replayed this game for my channel. I enjoyed it a lot, I really enjoyed the attacks, I really enjoyed the theme, but I did not expect to enjoy it even replaying it for this video, I had the exact same amount of enjoyment. And even though it was easier, I still enjoyed it a crap ton. That's the thing that really impressed me about it. I think that this boss fight is easy now, but since all three points of the criteria are blown off the charts, I love it still. And that's insane to think about. Well, first off, the immersion in this fight is off the charts. The background looks amazing. Bowser looks really intense and really cool, and it doesn't even clash with the game. I also think that the theme here is amazing. I think that even rivals in the final, in my opinion. Now, that's obviously subjective, but I really enjoy it. It's really adding to the immersion as well, which is so nice. I also enjoy the attacks here. They're very unique and very fun, and even though I got better at them and I was really able to dodge them, it didn't matter because they were so unique and so fun. That's the thing about it, as you have those three points, I will always enjoy a final boss. I also enjoy that you can't use some of the trio attacks when Bowser is all cuffed up in his armor, which is very nice. It's a little touch that makes the boss fight a bit harder, because when you have Paper Mario's turn, you barely can do anything, which is good. I enjoy this boss fight so much. I think it's extremely underrated, but I definitely can see why people won't really care about it. But I don't understand when people don't like it. I think it absolutely rivals every single final boss in the Mario & Luigi franchise. I love this final boss to death. This boss fight is phenomenal. If Shiny Robo Bowser was off the charts with three points of criteria, then Dark Bowser exploded the charts like crazy. Well, first off, this boss battle is very immersive. Even before the boss fight, the cutscene before it is amazing. Obviously, Mario and Luigi introduce him to Bowser and literally tell Bowser that he's inside of him and will help him. That's a very good cutscene. I also like the speech before Dark Bowser and Bowser fight. I also like all the wind. It's very intense and it's very scary. That's what I love for a final boss before it. It's not as good as Bowser Jr.'s Journey cutscene, but it's still really good. I also really like the theme here. It's in the final. I don't really have to say anything else. It's probably one of the most loved battle themes in any Mario and Luigi game, so it's kind of obvious. But something else is that I think that Dark Bowser and Fawful in general has really good attacks. They're very unique and very fun to dodge. The minion attack that Dark Bowser does after he grows huge is my favorite attack in the Mario and Luigi franchise, or at the very least, a very high placement for that. I enjoy the attack a lot. It's very long and there's a lot of enemies. Kind of like the Dreamy Bowser part where a ton of enemies just start attacking Mario and Luigi. I also really enjoy that attack. That's a really fun attack to dodge and I really enjoy it. But there's still two phases to this fight. The Fawful part is up next. And I think that is kind of a better version of Elder Princess Shroom. Even though it's kind of hard to conceal his weak point, he tries. You have to first attack his eyes, then you have to attack all of his legs. So it takes a lot of effort to try to attack his weak point. Kind of like Elder Princess Shroom and Cacoletta's soul. I really enjoy that part. This boss fight makes it as difficult as possible while still having somewhat easy attacks to dodge, so it feels extremely fair. And I don't think that this boss will ever get extremely easy like Dreamy Bowser or Elder Princess Shrew, which is very nice. It makes me want to replay this boss fight every single time I play Bowser Inside Story. I will literally get the cartridge of Bowser Inside Story and put it in my 3DS just to fight this boss. That shows how much I enjoyed that. 
I love Dark Bowser, and it's my favorite boss in all of the Mario and Luigi games. Thank you guys for watching this video. My next video will be on... I, I don't know. Origami King, maybe the Mario and Luigi franchise again? I'm not sure. But thank you guys for watching this video. If you lasted this long, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. I still try to hit 1,000 subscribers before summer break starts, so I really appreciate it if you did that. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video, and G-bye.